1969, the arrival of the first Hawker Sidley Harriers in RAF Germany brought an entirely new dimension to the combat capability of the RAF. Here was an aircraft that didn't depend on vulnerable airfield runways. Instead, the Harrier could operate out of small strips hidden, for example, in woods in the forward area. This also meant that the aircraft could react within a few minutes to the Army's needs. The Harrier was a developed version of the P-1127 Kestrel, and it became the first VTOL aircraft in the world to enter operational service. Three squadrons at RAF Wildenrath took delivery of the original Harrier GR-1s, an aircraft that was soon updated to GR-3 version. Like the original model, the GR-3 was equipped with twin 30mm Aden guns in underbelly pods, together with a variety of weapons and five pylons, two on each wing and one on the fuselage centerline to carry a combination of free fall and retarded bombs, 68mm SNEB rockets or sidewinder air-to-air -air missile for self-defense. The main differences between the Mark I and the Mark III Harrier was the more powerful engine of the latter, the Pegasus 103, which gave 21,500 pounds of thrust and the addition of the Ferranti laser ranging and Mark target seeker equipment. The Harrier GR3 was followed into service by the GR5 and more recently by the GR7. This very latest model gives the Harrier for the first time a full night attack capability. The Harrier quickly established many records. As early as May 1969, for example, squadron leader Lecky Thompson entered the Daily Mail transatlantic air race by flying from a coal yard near St Pancras Station in the middle of London to a landing ground in New York in 6 hours and 11 minutes, having been refuelled over the Atlantic by Victor Tankers. For many years now, the Harrier has been a familiar sight at air displays across the world. Its remarkable hovering performance, its pirouettes and slow time just above the ground, and perhaps above all, the astonishing ability of this fixed-wing aircraft to fly backwards, continue to delight crowds of applauding admirers. The operational qualities of the Harrier were to be tested for real during the Falklands conflict of 1982. 
Because the Falkland Islands were some 4,000 miles from Ascension, the nearest potential base for air operations, RAF Harriers operated from aircraft carriers of the Royal Navy, alongside their fleet air arm colleagues. While Sea Harriers, FRS-1s of the three Royal Navy squadrons involved, concentrated most of their efforts on air defence work, the ten Harrier GR-3s of Number 1 Squadron undertook mainly ground attack missions. Out of the 1,500 or so Harrier sorties flown during the campaign, about 125 were carried out by RAF aircraft against key Argentine targets on the ground.